It is Tuesday, February 27th. Welcome to Menace to Sports. Today is the day. I don't know if everyone's been waiting for it, but damn, have we been waiting for it. One, we got a lot to talk about. Spring ball starts in what, like a week? And we got a little, you know, a little, some, some little newses, some news pieces, some articles. Are you, are some, you Italian? <laughs> some newses, you know? We got some little birdies talking about kind of the vibe. And, and we want to talk about it because it's a thing. It's a thing amongst the coaching staff, kind of like who killed it during winter. It doesn't always translate into huge level ups on the football field in spring ball, but most of the time it's indicative of what's coming. Who had a dominant winter? Who kicked its ass? Because they're focused, laser light focused on becoming a great player. We're going to talk about that, kind of go through pre-spring, and then we got a rebrand. A rebrand official video is coming out. It's going to be, it's a teaser to what will be our new intro video for the show, which I'm extremely excited about. Um, I'm really excited about everything. New logos, new type fonts, new everything. The new menace is here. And I'm excited about it, Chris. Let's go. It's going to be sweet. We got a mascot. We got a logo. You'll see it all in the video coming in a, in a minute. Whenever I, I guess I toss it to Project Pat over there to cue it up. But how's it going? I'm, I feel much better in case anyone's wondering. Zach came in here on a fucking million. Bro. <laughs> I literally, I mean, you know, I got this whoop band and I, I swear by it. If, and I'm, I don't even make money by it. Like it's, it's not like a product promotion. Like I got one because uh, c- a couple of our OGs told me about it. I got Justine and I one, and it's, it's legit, man. It, it tells you how much you recovered. Like it, it makes you feel awful if you drink. I mean, it, it really does. It's, I woke up on Monday before I came in and I was like, Gee, my recovery was an eight, eight percent. Yeah. A percentage out of a hundred, eight. And that's why I felt the way I felt today. 92. My recovery day yesterday was 92%. Killed the, killed the gym this morning. What time did you go to bed last night? Oh, God. I probably like 10, 30. Oh, then maybe 11. I was in bed before 10, dog. Feeling, Were you? See, feeling I cannot good. do that. But once the kids go to bed, Justine needs attention. And it's like, you know, just, just I can never get to bed that early. Got you. Okay. But, um, yeah, I feel great. So, I feel great. The rebrand's coming. It's going to be a massive, what did I say, month? I mean, the, the, I need an update on the bus. I just was texting with my bus guy. The website is, is, is I'll say, over halfway done. And the website's going to be a difference maker for you, for you guys. It's going to be a hub. Not that kind of hub. A menace hub. It's going to be a place for you to hang out, right, where all the film rooms are. We're going to have message boards, group chats, fucking social media profiles. It's going to be big time. I'm really, really excited about it. And then we're going we're gonna to launch our new merch line with the new logos, the rebrand, everything. So we got a lot of shit coming. And couldn't be more excited, I guess. I'm not, that's why I'm in a great mood today. And what else do we have today? Oh, bourbon and ball tonight. Hey, shout out to 11 Warriors. Some fucking dweeb decided he was going to put a video out breaking down Chip Kelly's run game today. Hmm, I wonder where he got that fucking idea. But I got it for you tonight. Actual, someone that actually coached football and knows what he's talking about is going to sit down and break down Chip Kelly's run game. Bourbon and ball tonight. It's VIP only. I don't put it out for, for free because they'll, they'll take my YouTube channel down. Right. And it's all 22 film. It's not some weird zoomed in TV copy film. So we're going to break down. I got two different games of Chip Kelly's. We're going to break one down tonight. I got a little uh, blood oath bourbon we're going to sip on. So come hang out. Eight o'clock. Uh, you can, it's 20 bucks a month. That's all it is. And we do it every Tuesday. And then in season, we break down five games a week. I'm talking every day. There's videos dropping. So if you want to, you can get 10% off and book it. Subscribe for the year. And that'll include the whole football season this fall. So. I'm excited for it. I'm really excited for this one. One, because I haven't watched it yet. I haven't, mm-hmm. I have no idea. Everyone's talking about Chip Kelly runs a triple option and all this. I'm like, ah, I don't think he does that anymore, but we're going to find out on Bourbon and Ball tonight. So I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. Be there or be square, as they say. Square as hell if you don't come. <laughs> In all walks of life, trust me. All right, let's get this thing going. Luki, let them know what time it is, Bubba. We will get to the show, but I, I got to do it now. I got to lob it up. Just a little. I, I got to. I, I, let me preface it this way. Um, we Shout out our guy, Torin, right? Yeah, Torin. He, he put this video together for us just because he, he loves the show and he's fucking crazy talented. Super and, helpful to me, like in my, oh my, in my journey. And he, he, he did it and it was already badass. And then he redid it for no reason. Like it was already an A plus. And got me, it got me in my feelings, like emotional. Like I'm talking throwback. What is it? May, May 19th or May 20th, 2019? May 20th, 2019 was the first episode of Menace to Sports. And 
what a journey it's been. So let's get to the rebrand. Let's see this new, new menace to sports. I really want to start off by saying thank you for tuning in. Whether it's out of support, out of hate, out of interest, or out of entertainment, we appreciate you taking the time to see what this is all about. Here I am, a former college football coach that was in some historically monumental programs. I have no desire ever to get back into coaching. That gives me the greatest gift in the world, freedom to say anything. It is. They need to level up. I think we have some freaks in Menace Army. I'm okay with that. Go watch the fucking film. But I appreciate you for riding with us, Menace Army. Menace out. There he is. The Menace mascot. We got a little devil looking dude. New logo, new type fonts, new everything. So this is the beginning of the revamp or the, the level up, as, as the video said. New everything. And we're going to have a new studio set. New. We're definitely going to fix this fucking computer or get a new one. That's for sure. So the level up, it, it, I've told you it's coming. It's it's just, it's a process. So I need to know in the chat, what do you think? One, one to 10, what do you think of that video? What do you think of the new logo? What do you think of our mascot? I just need some feedback. Let me know, Menace Army, what you think. All right, Chris, now let's get to the show. Uh, real quick, do you want to reflect on your time since you started in, in, in what, 2019? Not really, dude. I'll get emotional. Okay, hey, whoa, whoa there, Tiger. I'm just saying, just like, asking. It, like when I watch that video, I'm like, Jesus, I just, I don't even know what the fuck happened. I don't know what you guys all did to my life. I really don't like I got fired and not even 12 months later started a podcast. What the fuck? Who does that? Like who does that? And think, and, the, and it's going to become this like a, we cleared $600,000 last year. We have seven employees, a podcast that I started in my freaking like den, just wild, wild, I guess, wild, the power of you guys, wild, the power of actual, just like authentic, unfiltered content. It's just a wild world we live in. And I, I'm so appreciative. So there you go. I didn't get emotional. Yeah, there's there's your reflection. Good job. Uh, my reflection has been it's been dope. I don't know. <laughs> it's been can, really I, can we play it one more time? Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. want to play it one more time. one more time. All right, cue it up, Pat. I need to watch it again. I really want to start off by saying thank you for tuning in. Whether it's out of support, out of hate, out of interest, or out of entertainment, we appreciate you taking the time to see what this is all about. Here I am, a former college football coach that was in some historically monumental programs. I have no desire ever to get back into coaching. That gives me the greatest gift in the world, freedom to say anything. It is. They need to level up. I think we have some freaks in Menace Army. I'm okay with that. Go watch the fucking film. But I appreciate you for riding with us, Menace Army. Menace out. I, I know I'm weird, but that gets my dick hard. It does. It really does. <laughs> it's not what I was expecting. That's been really cool, though, dog. I mean, we've no. been, I mean, me and you've been together for what, two, three years? Something. I don't even know. So you're CJ Stroud's. Yeah. The first loss to Michigan was, was the, uh, was the first show. Ohio State hasn't beaten Michigan since I added Chris to the show. Yeah. Just remember that. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. But we're, hope, we're hoping Pat is the catalyst. Right. Because I'm the I've catalyst been, of change. Because I've been waiting to act crazy on the show after that game, dog. Like I've been waiting to act like a nut. Maybe and, that, that's what it is. You need to settle the fuck down. And it, honestly, like this year might be the most nut shit if it is Devin Brown and we beat Michigan. Like that would be oh, honestly just blocked. I'll just let Chris do the show by himself. Like I'll just come in with a bottle of Jameson. I won't <laughs> write a show and we'll just go. And <laughs> it it is what it is. Um, I want to start off with a couple of quick topics. DJ Moore, dog, has chosen his side in this whole Caleb Williams or Justin Fields kind of civil war that's taking uh, taking place amongst Bears fans. He basically said, I absolutely want Justin Fields. None of these quarterbacks compare to uh, to Justin Fields, including Caleb Williams. And it's going to be real awkward for DJ Moore if they do indeed end up drafting, uh, you know, Caleb Williams, which he's – that's that's kind of the, the odds-on favorite spot to go. Yeah, of course it is. De definitely different than, uh, than Cole Komet. Cole Komet kind of played both sides. DJ Moore picked a side. I mean, you know, are. it's one of those things where at the end of the day, if DJ Moore's there, they trade Justin Fields and draft Caleb Williams, and he's the quarterback, they'll be fine. Like, he didn't say anything derogatory, but I will tell you this. No one with a football background that wants to evaluate Justin Fields' college tape comparatively to Caleb Williams, no one 
would pick Caleb Williams with his fingernails painted wearing fucking dresses over square-jawed Justin Fields. No one. Now, does he have a little bit more upside? I don't even see it. I don't maybe so. maybe like a, a, a little bit somewhere, but the intangibles matter at quarterback. And I would take Justin Fields over Caleb Williams in this year's draft if they both came out. I would. And that's not biased. I don't give a shit where the fuck he played. If he played at Michigan, I would say the same thing. It's just real. No, I agree. And and I feel like when I saw this from DJ Moore, I was like, uh-oh. Because most quarterbacks maybe wouldn't hold this against the wide receiver. But maybe the quarterback that paints his nails and wears the dress will hold this against his wide receiver. And for me, I'm like, DJ Moore, dog. Like, I hear you. You want to support your boy. Maybe for your own career. Maybe, But maybe that's good for him. You want to stand on, stand on business, I guess. Hey. But it just feels like of all the quarterbacks that would hold that against him, Caleb Williams. It just strikes me as one, and that's based off just fingernail painting. No, not just that. His interviews, too. Yeah. After that they too. lose a game, the shit he says about, you know, the fans and stuff like that. Like, I, I like making fun of Max Duggan for crying. <laughs> yeah. Just, I, 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 and those who watch the show know, I, I was going into last year, I was like, this kid is special. Special, special. Like he has a he has a real chance. And then we got no level up, right? We got he didn't get better going into this last football season. And then all the antics got me the fuck off the, off the wagon. I'm off. Um, Justine wants you to play the video again because Cam is now in the chat. I sent it to him. She can oh. relax. <laughs> just wanted to, just want to make sure want to make sure I got I, that. There. I saw that's what I just did on my phone. I saw him say what video. I missed it. I just tuned in. I was like, here's the video. Well, also a rewind button. Uh, is YouTube. it live? Can you do that? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can hit the. Double tap the left side. It'll go oh, back a little go. bit. So just just for all those, because I know some people come in late and <laughs> watch it on double speed to catch up. There you go. So the more the more you know. Um, also, in other news, Russell Wilson sat down and did an interview with uh, with good old Brandon Marshall on the I Am Athlete. He was talking about kind of his contract stuff, and the Broncos really tried to fuck bro over because they made a bad decision to pay him all that money. They wanted him to get rid of the injury guarantee, and they basically were baiting him into doing something so they they could kind of pull that guarantee away and he never budged never moved i liked russell wilson a little bit more than i have after this interview i've been out on russell wilson for a long time you have oh yeah really really long time i did i did it's just i, I don't know if it's not i like a cocky quarterback like i do i like a guy that th thinks he's fucking like the goat but he just does it with such pussy energy and that's what i don't like quarter i don't like anyone really but mm. let's just start with quarterbacks that has this like massive ego but they're a gaping vagina. That's just what he is. Like, when he's talking, he wants to win, like, three or four more Super Bowls? What? That was fried. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that, was, that was very You're not fried. even going to sniff one. What are you saying? Three or four more? How many does he have? One. One. How about just try to win a second one? Like, I, I can't. I just, and it's the dopey face. Like, I just, I fucking hate. I just, I'm not a Russell Wilson guy. It was, it was, that was fried as fuck for him to say. I'll, just I'll give you that. That was fried. I did I did like, though, that he kind of had no problems talking about this Broncos saga. Because, I mean, you got to think he's out of there. Like, oh, they literally yeah. told him, we're going to bench you if you don't get rid of your injury guarantee. And considering the coach that wanted to bench him is the main guy that was a part of the, uh, the injury gate thing, the last thing I want is for my injury. Because as soon as they would have got it off, it would have been like, we got 500 racks. Somebody, Take him out. Somebody knocks Mr. Unlimited's head off 500 bands absolutely 500 bands so it just and, felt, and it, it it'll felt be like in seven. practice it'd be like it'd be like self-inflicted yeah it some would. like fucking practice squad player just wipes him out mm -hmm. and then has a front office job two weeks later that's how the NFL <laughs> world your new assistant gm <laughs> yeah that's that's how it goes so i i should the nflpa step in and defend russell wilson because i feel like if he wasn't such a cornball they would have already gone to absolute war for him and yet they have it. It's kind of just, oh, well, it's the NFL. It is what it is. Yeah, but what but did they really do, is... though? They wanted him to take – they wanted him to alter his contact, tr contract. He wouldn't. And now that they, they have to pay the contract as it's written. And if they try – they're trying to get rid of him because they don't like him. Yeah, but that – that there's got to be a rule against teams benching guys for that reason. No, nah, you can do whatever you want. You're the coach. That's – Guy doesn't fit the culture, not the leader, not, not, not our QB1. Shit, we knew that when Sean Payton walked in the door. Well, though. And I, I guess, mean, Russell Wilson demanding that he, oh, I, I need my, my my private quarterback coach needs an office. Like, if you don't shut your bitch ass up and go fucking throw the post route, your private quarterback coach needs an office. Fuck you. That's fair. I agree with you on that front. 
but when you talk to him, you can't tell him we are benching you unless you get rid of the injury guarantee. How about we're benching you because you're not a culture fit? We're benching you because we hate Mr. Unlimited? We're benching you because we think you're a cartoon That's version fair. of a quarterback? Not we're benching you because <laughs> we made a bad decision in negotiating your contract. That's fair. Like that's that, that's, fair. that's my thing. That's fair. And it just feels like an HR nightmare. <laughs> it feels like a really bad deal. Yeah, like a really bad thing. Yeah. So I, I agree with you, but also like, damn, like, how about don't give him the injury guarantee? Because nobody else was going to give him two hundred and fifty million dollars all guaranteed with no injury. No one else was going to give him that. No. Like you wanted to brag and look at look how we managed our cap for the last three years. Look, we have enough that we can pay this guy and all you guys. You know, like we did it right. It's like all right, you wanted to brag about doing it right. It came back to get you. Yeah, that's that's too damn bad. Yep. So um, that that's on them. So we'll we'll see how that that it'll un, unfold. It sounds like the Steelers are interested in him or Justin Fields. Please get Justin Fields. Fuck the Steelers. Get get Russ. I will, oh my god. You want to talk about negative culture fit? Russell Wilson and Mike Tomlin might be the worst match possible. And as a Browns fan, I will celebrate it until he's gone. Like it'll be the best day ever if they get Justin Fields. That's, I, I mean, I I want that for Justin. I want that for Steelers fans. Mm -hmm. I don't want that for myself or Browns fans at all. Russell Wilson, oh, sign me the fuck up, please get Russell Wilson to Pittsburgh. Because if Justin Fields is in the division, the Browns have the what best quarterback in the division? Fourth, the the worst. Yeah, and that's wild because you paid him the most. Yeah, but it's also the best quarterback division in the NFL. Yeah, if that happens, I mean, what are we talking about? Oh, for sure. I'm trying to think of what other what 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 divisions even come close. I, I mean, guess. and to be fair, Deshaun Watson, if he's healthy and playing well, is better than Justin Fields. I mean, we're talking about Justin Fields might be a bust. Deshaun Watson was at yeah. one time a top five quarterback in the league. Like, I just I don't have faith. I think he's going to break his dick getting jerked off or something. I don't know. I don't even know if he's going to be the quarterback ever. Yeah, I guess I think the Justin Fields bust stuff is just lack of knowledge. I mean, if you look at his, what his last twenty games, it's like the same exact stats as Lamar Jackson. With more rushing yards and more rushing touchdowns and less fumbles, the more you know. I'm trying to think of what other division has close quarterbacks. I mean, no, Buffalo. I mean, not AFC East. They got Josh Allen, Tua, Aaron Rodgers, and then Mac Jones kills it. Yeah, and Aaron Rodgers again has to be healthy. Yeah, um, but that's a solid ass division. No, that is solid. AFC South. They've got T. Law, C.J. Stroud. Bill Levis, Anthony Richardson. <laughs> Cooked. I mean, CJ's carrying that that division. And then as and, a rookie. Yeah. That that's well, I'm trying to think who there's else. no one close. If Joe Burrow's healthy, Deshaun Watson's healthy, Lamar Jackson's the fucking MVP. And if you put it even a competent quarterback in Pittsburgh, that's the best quarterback division in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, and my my NFC East might have a real a real shot. Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts. Stop it. Stop it. Daniel Stop Jones it. and Sam Howell. No, yeah, I'm just, what? I'm, I'm trolling, I'm like, bro. I'm trolling, bro. I'm trolling, bro. You are trolling I'm hard trolling, right trolling, there. Trolling, 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 trolling. That was a reach of all reach. <laughs> that was a reach. Foul on the play. <laughs> Reaching <laughs> violation. Um, So now, Andy Reid's been wanting to deal for a while. I guess the Chiefs are finally ready to make him the highest paid coach in the whole NFL. Why did it take so fucking long? Should he be? Yeah. The guy is, the guy is essentially, you, you know, early Bill Belichick right now. I yeah. mean, he's, he's building... The only, I mean, he's building a dynasty, right? We don't, I don't know. I'm not, I mean, I see, I think he's been the second best coach to Bill Belichick for the last decade. I mean, what Absolutely. is it? 70% of the time he's made it to the, the conference championship game. Yeah. Like, I mean, what he did in teams. Philly and now what he's done in Kansas City, dude's a fucking legend. A yeah. legend. Fuck so, yeah, I'd say it's time to pay that man. Doesn't that feel crazy though, dog? Yeah. Like, why did it take like what three Super Bowls in five years to get to be the highest paid? Like, do you think they had a meeting <laughs> like, hey, this guy we got coaching, he's, he's not bad? Yeah. Maybe should, that's why they want to get Eric Bianami out of there. Maybe. We gotta we gotta see you do it without the black man. <laughs> we gotta see you do it. Like fuck, dude. Like he he damn near won it with Alex. He went to an, to a, a title game with Alex Smith. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It took it took long enough, but here we are. I'm glad that they are finally getting it done. What do you think that number will look like? Will it be 25 million? I have no idea. I mean, it's yeah, it's he's gonna make a shitload. Because <laughs> like we're talking money. about like college coaches are now making what like 10 million. Yeah, oh, yeah, 12 million a year. Yeah. NFL coaches, I think, uh, I think what Bill Belichick made twenty million. Yeah, he's got to get like twenty five. Yeah, he, I think he'll probably get. I mean, he'll get twenty million a year. That that that'll be the starting point. And if they really want to dunk on the on the industry, they can go bigger. But yeah. twenty million a year is crazy for a coach. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, we just got to the point where ten million was like, wow, ten million, and he's going to double that. 
crazy. And in the NFL, like they're working to reset the market too yeah. because they want they don't want to lose coaches to the college football anymore. So um, Bill Belichick became the highest paid coach in all of athletics, not just like all of U.S. Uh, sports, not just yeah. NFL at twenty million dollars. And it looks like Andy Reid could uh, could pass that up. Uh, Zach, want to get a quick word from our partner and then talk about uh, some football stuff. Okay. Sounds good. We'll be right back after this. Menace Army, it's not time to stop gambling. I know that much. Football season's over, but it's still a great opportunity to bet on some basketball. I'm not a basketball fan, but I will throw some money on some props. Shout out our guy Mensa, who will give you all the prop bets you need. And as always, the best sports book out there, my bookie, has got your back. You can parlay anything in the world. I'm talking rebounds, assists, probably how what, what color Gatorade they get when they go to the bench. You can bet it all at my bookie. All you got to do is go to my bookie, use promo code Menace, and get that deposit bonus right now. Use our promo code and go lock in for basketball season. It's a time to build your bankroll because March Madness is a month away, baby. Mensa's got you with the picks. My bookie's the best sports book in the world. Go check it out now and get that free cash each. Free money, never turn it down. If you're going to gamble, go gamble with my bookie. My correction on Alex Smith, he did not play in an AFC championship game. He played in an NFC championship game. Uh huh. You know who he lost to? No, the Giants. Um, <laughs> Nobody cares. Damon Arnett in uh, some more trouble. Fucking hell! I got tagged about a million times. Zach, people want your thoughts on it, and, uh, and I mean, so it's I'll the same it. thoughts as the last time he got in trouble. I love Damon Arnett. He's he's got a good heart. He does, and I know people will be like, "What the fuck?" He had meth and carrying a, unlawfully carrying a gun at at three thirty a.m. on January sixth, the insurrection. Damon Arnett is the insurrection, the, an actual insurrection. It's the kid just, he reminds me of Aaron Hernandez. He just wants to be a thug so bad, but he's not. Like, he's a good kid. Like, he's not some fucking meth gun carrying, like, felon. That's not who he is. Obviously, it is because your actions are who you are, but he just wants to be that so bad. It's that poser syndrome, right? We You see it all the time. John Morant. Yeah, John Morant's a great example. Like, what are you doing? Put the fucking gun down. You went to a private school. You have a good family. You were raised right. Shut the fuck up. Oh, dude, I'm going to get a grill and flash a gun and smoke some fucking ice. No, oh, that's a fucking great idea, Damon. What a great life you'll probably lead, right? Big time NFL. Oh, no, you're not anymore. Like, just, it's it, it's unfortunate, man. Because I really, I told, I've told this story a hundred times. One of my favorite moments, I used to talk shit to him before every game. Tell him he wasn't shit. He was going to get dunked on, and he, he would be like, just, just like locked in, look like shake, nodding his head. I'd be like, if you're not a bitch, go get the fucking ball and bring it to me. And he'd be like, he just, I said, when they have a fucking ball, go get it and bring it to me. And this motherfucker had a pick against Michigan State and almost knocked me over with it when he gave it to me. I, I, I just, I, I love, I love Damon, but it's unfortunate what's going on with him, man. And I've reached out. I reached out last time. I didn't reach out this time. Guys, guys, guys want to need to want to be different, mm -hmm. to be different. And clearly he doesn't. He's going to be frustrating. I mean, to, to kind of see like a, what, who was a young man continue to make these mistakes. Yeah, it sucks. It really but, sucks. And that's, that's kind of my only thoughts on it. Um, I hope he gets, I hope he gets the help, but you're right. He's got, he's got to want the help first before they go down that road. Um, some other NFL news, T Higgins ended up signing the franchise tag, but because of the massive ratings bump, that the NFL had the salary cap went up over thirty million dollars, and even after the franchise tag, and they have Joe Burrow in the fold already <laughs> signed, the Bengals have fifty million dollars in cap space available to them. Zach, that is a lot of money, That's and they have a real chance to double up on some players and go stop the dynasty. You would think. I mean, they're they're the Achilles heel, right? If Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City are not going to become a dynasty, it has to be Joe Burrow and the Bengals, right? That, that's just all, and, and as a Browns fan, it sucks to say, but it's true. Joe Burrow needs to be healthy. They need to spend this money right, but what a job they've done. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati, starting with Joe Burrow and getting these pieces in place, structuring contracts, the business sense that they had, it just makes places like Carolina, Chicago, like look like fucking buffoons because holy shit. They have T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon, fucking Joe Burrow, and the defense is leveled up every year. And now they got a shitload of cash to improve even more. Yeah. So I guess uh, my guy, my guy Oaken's a good point, Brandon, in the chat. I guess after uh, the rookie, if they sign their whole rookie class, it'll probably be right around like 39 million, which is still a ton of money when you have That's Jamar shit. Chase, 
um, Joe Burrow, and T. Higgins all in the fold on their contract. I was not expecting it to be that high of a number, but shout well, you got to the- figure if, if the if the salary cap went up thirty million, that yeah. means they would have only had nine million in extra cap space. I would imagine most teams are going to have around that number, right? Well, some teams are going to be cap hell. You'll be surprised. But how if they just got if it just went up thirty million? Well, they're, they're, they're everyone's going to start with a surplus of at least thirty million, right? Well, sometimes they like backload these contracts, though. Like, that's what the Rams kept doing, and that's why the but Rams. Then, but, but then, how would they do that? Because if they didn't get that salary cap bump, they'd be over the cap. Well, then you—that's why you have to like cut guys, right? And restructure, like, yeah, restructure and cut the guys. None of this matters, though. I watched it with Deshaun Watson right. with Joe Burrow. They just like give him a huge paycheck one day, and they're like, "Okay, new contract." He doesn't make that much. It's like what you just. You just paid him. Yes, he does. There are there are a good amount of loopholes. Loopholes galore. Um, do you remember that group of running backs that all got together last year I and do. decided that uh they you know they're gonna stand for something? It looks like none of them are gonna get franchise tagged. None of them. Um, Saquon Barkley, uh, Josh Jacobs, Tony Fowler, Derrick Henry, Austin Eckler. None of them are gonna get, get gonna get franchise tagged. Now this will be the first time we really see what the running back market is. It's the free market, Zach. Are they gonna get what they wish for? Nope. I mean, they're going to get what's coming. Running backs aren't worth that much. Who do, who do, who that you just named is a great player right now? Um, probably just Derrick Henry. I, I mean, I think Derrick Henry's old as shit. I think Saquon's a great player. Okay, kinda. Yeah. Well, Sa- Sa- Saquon's a great player with some injury history, but right. he's been hyperproductive when he's been there. Josh Jacobs is a really, really good player. Just led the league in rushing two years ago. Yeah. Um, I believe he, he was up above thirteen hundred yards. But just year. think, just think about their shelf life. Right, right. Like, what are they getting? Some uh, what a three year deal? Probably you want a three year deal. So out of those, what five? What do you say, five or six guys? We're not going to be blown away by some contracts now. It's not like the running back. Never mind if all those guys are on the market. Like, why would you go p- pay for Saquon if you could get Josh Jacobs for less? Like, that's going to hurt them. The competition at that position on the free market is yeah. going to hurt them all. They wanted a bidding war, and they're not going to get that. No. There's too many of them. That's like you go to a, a nice car auction. If there's only one fucking Maserati, that price is going to be pretty high. You got five of them? Like, oh, I'm not going to pay that much. I'll wait for the next one. Yeah. I, I do think Saquon is will probably take less money than Jacobs, mainly because he already got like one of the deals. Yeah. Um, and his prime is wasted. But I got a crazy stat for you, bro. What is it? You know that Todd Gurley is younger than Derrick Henry? No. That is, is crazy. And we haven't seen Todd Gurley suit up in a minute. No, like one of the great two year backs, and then boom, vanished, disappeared. And this was going to happen. All these guys on this list, two years from now, I will bet you all but one of them are basically out of the league just because that's the shelf life of a running back. Mm-hmm. And you have all these young guys, the Blake Corums of the world coming in, and it's like, fuck, am I going to pay Josh Jacobs two, three years from now when I could get a young rookie that's like fresh? Should the <laughs> NFLPA push for rookie deals to change year-wise based on position? Because I think that's the only way you can even come close to fixing it. Well, I mean, that's the issue, right? Is you're going to let a kicker have a similar type of restriction on a contract yeah. as a running back. When if a kicker's an NFL kicker, they could kick for 25 years. They could kick for 20 years. A running back's got, what, six? And guess how long that rookie deal is? Five. Five. Yeah. So it's like if you're if you're Saquon... They're already you're gonna run you into the ground, and then when you ask to get paid, they're be like, "Sorry, Bucko, like there's no no, no I, shot on these tires." I'm going to get the next Saquon, right? Like, yeah, yeah we, it's a good running back class. I don't know if we can take you, but but if it's if it's a two year, two or three year rookie deal for these running backs, then all of a sudden it's like, oh shit, Saquon's in his prime, Zeke's in his prime, lead the league in rushing. Yeah, we have to pay him. Yeah, and then I I think mean, that's the only way you you can really fix it, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. Um, Tyler, thanks for the five. Good morning, Coach and Chris. I just subbed to the Bourbon and Ball Patreon as Let's a general go. tier. Very excited and representing the 330. Shout out Akron. Shout out Akron. Hey, tonight's gonna be really fun. Like, I'm I'm never not excited for them, but I'm just it's one of those things that's like a present, a Christmas present. And we get to open it up together tonight mm-hmm. and actually like know what the fuck we're talking about, not watch some fucking jerk off talk about it on YouTube for 11 Warriors or anyone. Like, let's actually fucking break it down and see what it is. Hey, Philly trying, bro. What do you say? Thanks for the... F- no, fuck your five, Philly. How big of a donation for Chris to do this show without a hat? 
<laughs> well, that's you. What's your price? I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need five bands. Oh my god! Yeah, Chris would absolutely do the show without a hat for less than five bands. Five. I, I need five bands and then an extra six hundred in my Venmo. <laughs> What's that for? I don't know. The lineup beforehand? Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, five bands is how much it costs to go to Turkey. I think so. <laughs> five bands, Philly, and you got it. <laughs> Bella, sorry, thanks for the five. Like my question from the other day, are these teams more likely to make the playoffs or fail to become bowl eligible? Rutgers, Maryland, UCLA, Washington. Let's start in reverse order. Washington, more likely to make the champion or make the playoffs or miss bowl season entirely. Rutgers is more likely to miss bowl season for sure. Fried. They are. They're winning. 9, 10, or 11 games. I'm just... Okay, Chris. And that is that is playoff window. No, it's fucking Rutgers. Of course, it's a more a higher likelihood that they don't make a bowl than make the college football playoffs. I don't make the rules. I, that's, that, that's the answer. So, what about Maryland? I want to start with Washington so we can do Rutgers last. Maryland, the same. UCLA? The same. Washington. All four of them are uh, neither. None of the four are making the playoffs. What is a twelve teamer, bro? I don't care. None of those four are making the playoffs. So they're that just by osmosis means they're more likely to not make a bowl game because there's zero point zero percent chance that any of those four make the playoffs. I've, you know, you put a list in our chat and our text. Hold up, where, 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 what's your name, Zach Smith? What's your name? Hold up, yeah, what's your name? Because you put a thing in there talking about all the teams that would have made a twelve team playoff. Yeah. And I'm looking through it. And you don't think, like, bro, come on, teams that would have made a 12-team playoff. North Carolina, Navy, Fresno State, Pitt. This is what it is. Since, since the college football playoff came out, how many teams, how many times would, he, would all of these teams have made the 12-team playoff? If we just started in 2014 with a 12-team playoff, mm -hmm. there's only one with 10, and that's the Buckeyes. They would have made the playoffs all 10 times. Every year. Bama, nine. What year was Bama not? Um, there was one year they had three or four losses. Was, I it, was it 17? I don't remember no, what year it was. Hmm. Then there's two teams that would have made it seven out of 10, and that's Georgia and Clemson. Oklahoma would have made it six out of 10 times. Michigan, five times. Penn State and Notre Dame, four times. I mean, there and then some of these, like, some of these are just wild. It's wild as fuck. Like, Cincinnati would have made it twice. Memphis would have made it twice. UCF Temple would have made it twice, which is wild. And then the single hitters are, even, like you said, Navy, Colorado, Stanford, Marshall. So I guess it's, it's possible. So the U, Miami's on that bitch. Do you recognize? Where's Rutgers? Do you recognize that school? Hold on, where's Rutgers? Uh, Shiano hadn't been there for 10 years. Where's UCLA? Um, damn. Yeah. But Washington's on it, bro. Washington's I on it because they had Kalen DeBoer and Michael Penix Jr., and then what about the other times? Well, they had that with Jake Coker or something one time. <laughs> Jake Browning. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> Bro, Iowa and Marshall. Marshall on there. Okay, Chris. you could. This is a crazy hill to die on if you want to. I'm already, I'm already dead on that record, so we're yeah, you here. Are. You we're, we're on that bitch. I spent, like, way too long making an inspirational video about Rutgers <laughs> making the playoffs. <laughs> we're there. Charles, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, by the way. I don't think that. I just think they're going to be a, a, surpri a surprise good team. They're going to be in that North Carolina realm of good. Okay? Fair? Is that good to say? <laughs> they would. However you want to backpedal, Chris. Yeah, like a D1 DB. <laughs> Charles, thanks for the two. Springfield here. Is Dallin Hayden going to stay? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think he will. Because after this year, the, the door's wide open, right? Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to lose Quinshawn Judkins. You're going to lose Travion Henderson. And Dallin has shown a lot of promise. He's shown a lot of flash. I think he'll be the third back. And we'll see how Tony Alford employs it. It's going to be tough to give him a ton of carries when you have when your first two are that fucking good. But let's not forget now. Injuries happen. And we'll 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 knock on wood here and pray to God they don't. But he's one broken shoelace away from being in the one-two rotation. Yeah. So he ain't going anywhere. Especially with the with the recent track record of Ohio State running back right. injuries. Well, they didn't replace the turf, did they? The turf. And they also don't like science being in the building to help prevent injuries. Uh, they, uh, they do now. Oh. They do. Menace Army works, by the way. Menace Army works. Let's go. Oh, I, my God. Hey, I, I brought up that really cool protective uh, gear that's a custom printer. Prints custom protective gear. Everyone in the NFL uses it. Michigan uses it. 
I pulled a couple strings, reached out. They got a meeting. It's happening. So we're pushing forward. We're push, We're helping out. Push helping the Buckeyes. Yeah. Pushing P. That's fire. Pushing P. <laughs> that is dope. Um, Squaws, thanks for the two. All I got to say is the takeover is here. Fuck the beat. <laughs> Are we beat? We're not beefing with the beat anymore, right? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think, I, you know, we're, we're kind of like in our own little lane now. I mean, it's just funny when they like, I've, for a week I've been saying we're, I'm going to do a Chip Kelly breakdown today. And then they try to try to do it. It's like, you got to know your lane. Like, there's a lot of things they're better than me at. Writing articles. Do that. I suck at that. But you're going to break down film and compete with me? Boy, that's that's a wild one. Definitely wild behavior, but you know, it, it is what it is. And are you surprised though? No, I'm not surprised. Okay. They've done it for fucking five years. <laughs> I mean, shit. Gorky, thanks for the five. Please make sure the registration is accessible to people outside of the States. Also want to get some merch, make it shippable at least to Canada. Okay, I will. We're on it. On Gorky, it. we are on it. On it. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Peyton, thanks for the five. Haven't caught a live show in a minute. What's up, fellas? Popped in at the right time. Love the revamp. 2024 is Menace to Sports' year. Let's go. Let's fucking go, man. We appreciate you. Dusty Boner, thanks for the two. Video gave me a rise in my Levi's. Let's fucking Same. go. Yeah. Was yours a Dusty Boner, though? No, no. Okay. Just asking. <laughs> Penguin, thanks for the two. Caleb Williams, eight career games versus top 25 defenses. In those games, eight touchdowns and seven interceptions. Is that a red flag stat for you? There's a ton of red flag stats. And don't, don't we're, we're going to get to NFL draft breakdowns uh, here really in the month, month of March and then April because we, we got to talk about some of this outlandish shit that's being said. I mean, we February is always a very conversational show, but we, we'll, and it's always a conversational show, but we're, we'll talk about, because that's a great stat. I mean, you just got to look at how the kid played against actual teams. Like, just because he threw for fucking eight touchdowns against the Aztecs, no one gives a shit. How do he play against Notre Dame? By the way, fucking terrible right. is the answer. Like, how did he play against a solid opponent? Usually mid at best. It is interesting. I, I've listened to a lot of draft analysts over the years because I don't know if you know, they used to be the uh, the goal to get to silly season, you know, be on the forefront. Yeah. And one of the things that I heard a lot of people, you know, in the know that left teams talk about was when they're evaluating guys, the toughest thing is each quarterback, they really only get to evaluate four games a year. Yeah. Because they don't, they're not going to sit back and watch the Bowling Green game unless it's JJ. They're not going to sit back yeah. and watch, you know, so and so versus Akron, like there's no point if they want to see these guys in the big games, and it's tough to account for. Okay, was so and so having a good day, or did they progress enough near the end? Because yeah. I, I only get to see. I mean, like guys like Josh Allen, I only got to see you play against one team, right, in three years because you went to fucking Wyoming, right, and that's <laughs> why it's so hard to draft you. And, and occasionally, guys will fall in love with trades, and that's where you get the big bust, like Trey Lance, yeah, or. Like Josh Allen, I would consider a boom, right? Like mm -hmm. he had the traits and it ended up translating. And also a, a kind of a change happened in the last like three or four years. And before it was about, you know, quarterbacks at bad schools elevating their schools. And then it went to, well, the best talent playing the best practice. And so we want those guys. Because previously, guys like like even the, even the Zach Wilson school thought, well, Zach Wilson doesn't play with all the best players. So the fact that he elevated his team makes me want to draft him. Yeah. And they use that against schools like Alabama and, and Ohio State. And then the PR shift came primarily from Nick Saban. And how'd that work? Yeah, exactly. Primarily from Nick Saban talking about, well, yeah, they only have four good games that you guys reference. But they're going up against the very, very best in practice, and Every they had to compete day. against the very best to even be the starting quarterback here at Alabama. It's, it's, there's a reason why Bama's players thrive, Ohio State's players thrive, and I used to sell in recruiting all the time. You are going against NFL players every fucking day, mm -hmm. every day. Like, think about what Carnell Tate is going to do every day. He's going against Denzel Burke, Jordan Hancock. Davis and Igbenosin. Oh, Jermaine Matthews ain't bad. Like, he's going against future NFL players every day. I mean, even in the winter, in February, they do a release drill. He's doing it against a, probably a first-round corner. It's just, it, it matters. As opposed to Trey Lance with how many NFL players is he practicing with on the day? Oh, yeah. What was that receiver from North Dakota State, too? Um, 
Christian Watkins or something? Yeah, wa- yeah. Like, what the Green fuck? Bay. He's going against like my 14 year old every day. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we talking about? He ended up being a pretty decent player. I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah. But, I'm just but, saying you can't. You, you can't. What? Oh, he was dominant. Well, fuck. I hope so. Yeah, and you weren't going to draft him in the first 10 picks. No. You were gonna you were gonna draft his traits because you knew you'd get him later rather yeah. than in that first round. I mean, Trey Lance never saw an NFL DB. No, never. never. And then walked into a room and people were wondering, well, the game looks too fast for him. We missed. Well, no fucking shit. Yeah, he was dunking on Johnny. Yeah. And also, he didn't even play his final year of college football. And you still, whatever. Um, Want to get a quick word from our partner. I'm on schedule today, Zach. I'm locked. You. You're on it because of the rebrand. Look at that. Shake shit up. Chris is back on point. We'll be right back after this. I think I can speak for all of us when I can say we want to have better sex. Even if you have the best sex you've ever had. Best sex in America, right? BIA. You still want to have better sex. And I got the product for you. It's called Joy Mode. It's similar to those electrolyte packets you put in water. You, all you do, you can carry it in your wallet, your purse, whatever. Your wife can carry it for you. All you do is you open it up, put it in 68 ounces of water, and it gets you right. It supports blood vessel support, cardiovascular and heart health. It supports erection, quality, firmness, and sex drive. It has a bunch of different vitamins. They've all been assessed by peer-reviewed journals, and all ingredients have been studied and researched in humans. It's safe, and it gets it going. You want to increase your sex, improve your sex life, go check out Joy Mode. All you have to do is go to usejoymode.com forward slash menace, and you get 20% off. I ordered it two weeks ago, and I'm telling you right now, boy, it works. <laughs> go check it out. You won't regret it. Valentine's Day's coming up. Get your shit hard, man. Full on bricked up, as Chris says. off with code Menace. Go to J-O-Y-M-O-D-E. Use joymode.com forward slash Menace. Great sex solved naturally. No prescriptions. Just a little packet to get your shit bricked up. Go check it out. It's really good. It's just a little packet you put in a bottle of water. Good to go. The bricker. The bricker. (laughs) Don't carry blicks, carry bricks. (laughs) Um, NCAA dog is gearing up for war. (laughs) You know, I, I, you know, they lost their little pre-battle against Tennessee and Virginia um, last Friday. And Charlie Baker has informed members uh, that he plans to convene the D1 Board of Directors and Governors to discuss the next steps following Friday's injunction, injunction in Tennessee. So it really feels like they're circling back and they're going to make one more final stand. But I don't see any way they win this. I don't know how they do it. I mean, it's it's one of those things where no one likes you. <laughs> Like, no one wants you to be the governing body. And if they did, you might be able to have a meeting and get something done, something accomplished, some kind of agreement. But no one that is of power in college athletics wants you to be a part of this thing. Yeah. So, fuck off. Bro, Charlie Baker is getting treated worse than a substitute teacher. And I like Charlie Baker. I think he's Me done a too. good – he's trying. He's better than Mark Emmert's bitch ass. So this is not an an indictment on Charlie Baker. He took over the Titanic when it was already, like, not on the floor yet, but it was underwater. Yeah. Like, it was already cooked. They already hit the iceberg. Yeah, oh, well before. (laughs) Like, the house is on fire, and he got told to go make an Airbnb. It's like, this bitch is on fire. Like, nobody's nobody's living here. There's smoke everywhere. Yeah, a bad deal. it's, It's a bad deal. And the way this looks is, bro, Michigan might get off entirely. I mean, like, this is going to crumble faster than most people realize. And NCAA is slow no matter what. They're going to move slow, and now all of their resources, all 13 people are all pointed at Tennessee trying to figure out how they can solve their jobs from, you know, fading away and falling down. And Michigan's up top, like, we we might just get away with it. Yeah, I think Michigan is – they're just in a different world, though. Okay. You're talking about affecting the sanctity – of the game that is played and we can all be just like ph- philosophically outraged about it, but there's a bigger piece here, right? The whole reason this all started, people gamble a lot of money, right? And Michigan was fucking over gambling. That's something that you don't do. I don't know if anyone has been to Youngstown or fucking Vegas. You don't fuck with the gambling or else you end up with concrete boots on the bottom of a fucking lake. Like, I th- I don't I don't think they're getting out of this. Okay. I really and I don't think they're going to get slammed. I've said that from the start. But there's going to be some repercussions because no matter what, they still have to protect the the integrity the integrity of the game. Like what these kids make off the field, the legality of it, like how much how they can monetize their themselves 
totally different. You're talking about cheating, cheating, and affecting the game. I know Big people. Are, I know people are talking about the hammer coming down, but I, I guess I just feel like if the hammer was really coming down, we would, we wouldn't hear about it every day for four months, right? Yeah. Like usually when, when a big like guess what we didn't hear about when they dropped the, the little <laughs> mini hammer, like the little Bob the Builder hammer, Florida State. We didn't hear anything about it. No. Just boom, dropped it. Yeah. Like even when Tennessee got their punishment the first time, like at the beginning of the season, feels like it was just yesterday. There was no like chatter for months about the hammer is gonna get slammed down. It just boom happened. Well, the yes, I agree with you. Okay. But we also are in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> we are like it's hard not to hear about it here. That's fair. And I don't know that it happened other places, but in Gainesville, Florida, they might have been talking about the hammer coming down on Florida State. Here, that's all anyone wants to talk about. Michigan won the Natty, beat Ohio State three times. All they want to talk about is is what's coming. The NCAA is coming. You Ham- cheated. Yeah. Hammer this. Hammer that. Hammer, hammer that. bammer. The fucking black guy with his dick out on the bed. Okay. Okay. Hammer coming. It's not exactly what I was thinking about. I, was I need thinking- to learn his name so I don't have to say that that way. Oh, because we all know who you're talking about. Everyone knows who I'm talking about. Yeah. You all know who I'm talking about. Yeah, buddy with the missile. Elbow on his knee. <laughs> Nightstick. Nightstick. There you go. Why does Pat know his name? Why is <laughs> why has Pat said one thing since I hired him, and it's fucking talking about a grown man's penis? That's all I want to know. He, he, he doesn't provide any input on football. All of a sudden, I talk about a grown man's dick, and Pat's like, oh. Why does Pat know his name? Oh, you mean Nightstick? Like, you mean Nightstick? Is cr- the craziest shit I've ever heard. I, I am blown away. I don't I, know if that's who I mean. As 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 someone who enjoys art, I know a lot of names. Didn't have that one in the repertoire. Kudos, Pat. Well, Pat, just keep pushing those buttons. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that fucked me up. Anyway, back to Michigan. In the NCAA, how soon do you think a crumbling happens? Do you think Charlie Baker maybe at this point sees the writing on the wall and instead of trying to go to war, how about we truce and negotiate with everybody? Because instead of talking with the NCAA governors or whatever, why don't you just talk with the presidents of schools and ADs and get with them to get everybody on the same page? Because you said it. Nobody likes you right now. Nobody likes the NCAA right now. Why not work to get them to like you? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a, it's be a hell of a project. <laughs> It'd be a hell of a job to, to try to get done. The other side of this, though, is this is devoid of Michigan. It's a totally separate conversation. When it comes to NIL, they're fighting the, the, the government. Like, they're not fighting schools. Right. The government is the one that keeps stepping in, federal courts with injunctions. Like They're stepping in and saying, you can't do that. That's illegal. And so, like, what the fuck do you want Tennessee to do? What do you want... Penn, what's Penn State supposed to do? Be like, oh, fuck the government. You can do that. Like, they're they're fighting a bigger battle, and I don't think they can win it. But they're stepping in because they are they got sued, right? Like, they're getting they're stepping in because the NCAA thought they could do this, this, and this without getting with Tennessee at all and surprise Tennessee. And Tennessee's like, all right, fuck you. Like, let's go. Yeah, but I think even if they got with Tennessee, Tennessee would have pushed back and done that, right? Because Tennessee's looking at it like their lawyers are saying they can't do that. Yeah. Well, it's illegal. But it took, like, the only reason, I I think the only reason Tennessee's pushing back this time is because the NCAA keeps picking on them when they know what Georgia and Bama have been doing. Well, that's fair, too. Like, they know that the other school's been doing it, and it's just Tennessee yeah, that's once too. a year getting hit with some shit. That's fair, too. I think that's the bigger issue. I, I So, maybe, and maybe that's just me. But it's also, what do you want us to do? Like, we had this big-time recruit we were recruiting. A, a booster or company that we don't control mm-hmm. flew him on a private jet. And guess what? That's legal. Fuck you want us to do. Tell them, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Okay? Like, fuck off. And also, it's like, we had to do that because everybody else was recruiting him the right. same way. And we wanted to get him. Yeah. Like, ask. Like it's not like these kids are, aren't getting anything, and then Tennessee's just like, oh, do this, that, and third form. It's like, no, they're competing with other schools that are also like, ask yourself, why did we have to do this to land this kid? Once you answer that question, I think everything else falls into place. Yeah. Speaking of Jets, this is awesome. This is the best NIL deal in the history of NIL deals. Jackson Dart. Of yeah. course it is. Of course it is. There is. Shit like this is why Chris loves Jackson Dart so much. My man signed an NIL deal. The first of its kind with Nicholas Air. He is able to use the company's fleet of private jets for whatever the fuck he wants. You talk about a flex. 
Woo! Do you know how much pussy he's going to get? Oh, my God. Zach Wilson could never. And if you've ever been to Ole Miss, oh, the sundresses and the pearls, he's going to be flying girls to get some fucking clam chowder in Boston for lunch. He is about to clean up. They're calling it philanthropy. <laughs> philanthropy. <laughs> philanthropy. Crass can't even say the word. <laughs> philanthropy. philanthropy. Yeah, that's that's code for getting laid. <laughs> oh my goodness, he's about to be up a million. Are you kidding me? Yeah, man, it's, hey, it's just it's just the modern age white Wilt Chamberlain. Literally Wilt. He is I, good for him. And I'm glad he. And it's funny because like. Like I thought that he would get a deal for maybe like Jet Blue. You know, he knows he knows the Wilsons pretty well. But Zach better watch out because Jack's starting about to bite the whole flow. <laughs> and I thought about you in recruiting. Like, damn, he's living better than than coaches are. Oh, yeah. Like now he's like to, like now it's to the point where Corey Dennis just got hired there, right? I right? know he's not his quarterback coach, but like Jackson Dart's quarterback coach is gonna have to go check in at Southwest, check his bags, wait fucking an hour and a half. Jackson Dart's gonna be like, Hey, do you want me to meet you down there? Like I'll leave in a couple hours and beat you there, because I'm just gonna walk on a walk on a G5. He's got to win the Heisman, and I'm just telling you, I've said it before. I'll say it again. This is not a flex because I had nothing to do with it. If you haven't flown private, oh my god, there's nothing that you 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 get on that plane and you're like, what the fuck is this world? There's nothing like it. Nothing. Jackson Darts won the offseason, dog. Yeah, he wins. Like, give that, him the Heisman. Give him the Heisman. That is outrageous, bro. The Heisman picture on the private jet is going to go so hard. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Crazy. That's nuts. So, shout out to Lane Kiffin for helping get that done. If he did help get that done, and if you're any other quarterback, I'm they, going. I'm going to Ole Miss. Come to the sip. Is that what they say? Come to the sip. I'm coming to the sip. We'll get you a whip and a G5. Yeah, like I'm literally up out of there. Like any court, like I'm up out of there. I'm going to the sip. Absolutely. I'm going to the sip. A fucking jet all time. Whenever he wants. No, nah, that's nuts. They'll never lose another. With Corey Dennis in the fold, they'll never lose another quarterback battle again, recruiting wise. <laughs> They'll literally never lose one. Um, we'll need some super chat, Zach, and then keep the show going. Come on, say it. Moving in a grooving. There you go. Biff, thanks for the 10. Been here since day one, and I'm amazed at how far you guys have come. You made the best damn college football show in the land. You deserve all the success in the world. Cheers, boys. I really fucking appreciate it, man. It means a lot. Well, I didn't know that's what I was doing, but I know now. And we're pushing. We're trying. Yep. Rose, thanks for the two. Hot take. Justin and Caleb are the same player. Yeah, except one's a real dude. Honestly, I think I think Justin is probably more cerebral and will i think he's a better athlete yeah he's a better athlete. way better athlete he's a better athlete and he's a square jawed dude yeah he'll you'll never see justin fields with his nails painted ever you hear me and, and you know i get it his mom was in some we'll give him a pass on that you won't see justin fields wearing a woman's dress either did you hear justin fields talk about like J jameson williams yeah uh no he basically said that like Jameson's job, and he's glad that he got success elsewhere because his job is just to kind of run clear out routes for Chris and, and Garrett. Yeah. What a way to utilize talent. I was like, damn. How? But but my other part of it is like, damn, we can use him for that. And I'm glad that Justin said, fuck it. He's outrunning everybody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot one down to him in the Clemson game. It's like, we can do that with him, but we can't do that with Jaden Ballard. Like, remember the tunnel street? Ballard's got to learn the whole route tree and be Wes Welker before we could ever play him. I don't know. I, I mean, I – I'm, I, I, yeah, I know. I, I know what you're thinking. I'm not going to. I'm good. Yep. Appreciate <laughs> you. <laughs> James, thanks for the five. With Chip being the OC, think we might see 40 run plays in a row against the Cheaters up north. Chip would go down as God. Buckeye troll. I mean, I don't know about you, but I really like that drive where we ran it every fucking play and just pounded it down their throat. Mm -hmm. I say we. Ohio State did. And scored a touchdown. That was cool. Yeah, it was really cool to see when Kyle McCord didn't have to throw the ball. It was oh, that was my that was my favorite offense we ran. My favorite part of the whole season. Yeah, the Kyle McCord handoff. Like, what play you want here? We, we watched one game of Yogi's. He said, "Coach, what are you calling here?" I said, "A fucking run." <laughs> like third and nine. Don't care. I'm running that bitch. Call it a draw. Gorky, thanks for the five. My apartment is being renovated the next three weeks. Hope my mom agrees to help me take my PC with me three doors down the hall. Mama Gorky, we hope you let him. Come on, mama. Let free Gorky. Free Gorky in the chat. Let him have his PC. Mm-hmm. 
Patriot, thanks for the 20. Living in Youngstown, we are right between Cleveland and Pittsburgh with half the population split between the two teams. If Justin goes to Pittsburgh, I'm immediately a Steelers fan. Sorry. I get it, man. I, I, I get it. Yeah. I guess I didn't realize I, it was. I don't, I can, that's one I could never do. I, I, can, I can get on board with the Bengals because of Joe Burrow, Sam Hubbard. Like, oh, the Steelers, I can't do it. What about the Giants? Oh, fuck the Giants. Well, damn, I was just see, you. Said I don't I was, like New York. <laughs> I don't like Eli Manning. They don't even play in New York. It doesn't matter. They're the New York football Giants. Or they're the yeah. They play. They play in Jersey. I mean, you brought Pat in. Pat the Giants. I don't fan. like Jersey either. I don't like Jersey at all. We love the New York Giants on this. I like show. it way better than New York. Okay, we can calm down. This was supposed to be a, sl- a slander of the Giants kind of deal. Kenny, thanks for the five. Goodness. Are there any updates on Harbaugh Jr.'s blown-out back he suffered while partying in German <laughs> Village? What? I didn't know about that. Are you trolling? Did he blow out his back? Uh, that's a, probably a gay joke. Oh, guys, it's not that. No, it's not that kind of show. Chris doesn't know Columbus like that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what? It, Just keep it moving in a groove. Got it. Germ- okay. Um, I don't want to know about <laughs> that kind of joke. And T. Spiv, thanks for the ten. Has the NFL? Ever drafted a little person before? Blake Corum. Block A Corum. Tank Dell's pretty fucking tiny. Tank Dell is the smallest I've no, seen. Of course. I mean, I don't think so. I'm sure they no, haven't. You can't have no. I mean, you like go under the lineman's legs or something. Dog. <laughs> if Patrick Queen hit a little person on the field, they'd die. Literally. They'd NFL definitely is die. The worst place ever. I mean, like, you know, if you haven't seen one at the combine, you, you imagine. Haven't seen- Jedrick, like, or imagine Trent Williams pulling. And he, oh my, okay. <laughs> Literally, he would pick him up by one hand and just lob him like a grenade. <laughs> oh, but hey, I love midget football. Yeah. You ever watch that? Um, oh. no. But the first project I want to do when we get the AI video is ask an, a computer to draw us a little person playing football. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll see. You know. That'd be cool. See who, see who gets routed up. David, thanks for the five. Come on, Chris. We all know you have a Stephen A. Smith hairline. You want to find out? Five bands. <laughs> it ain't pretty. Okay. Calm down. I mean, it's better than Julian. I will I will post a uh, see. No. no, I won't post a picture. No, you won't. I mean, there is one out there, is the thing. There is. There is one it. on there is one on Twitter. I have it too. It's, well, it's on it's on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, so I, yeah, I mean, probably. I think it's on the Menace Twitter, actually. Yeah. But, I mean, we're just kind of buried along a million What's tweets. the opposite of the Hall of Fame? Um, The Hall of Shame? Yes, they are in the Hairline Hall of Shame. Oh, it's, it's Both not. of them. Both of them. <laughs> no. James, thanks for the five. The rebrand is lit, y'all. Ohio State Media hasn't put out a video like that since 2017. That video got me full masked. Salute us. No joy mode. Level up is real menace army. Fuck yeah. I appreciate it. We're going to play that bitch again at the end of the show. I might play it a couple times because that shit, that shit is so fire. Oh, whoa. I didn't even see this. Hey, what? yo, it's Jeff. Thanks for the five. We got to get that Georgia Tech talk in. Paul Johnson just shit all over Jeff Collins. Said put some respect on his fucking name. Thoughts? No, he didn't, bro. Did he really? I don't know, but we are a minister of mayhem show. I don't, I don't want to. And I don't even Fuck Paul Johnson. I got no affinity for Paul Johnson running that archaic bullshit offense in the heart of Atlanta. in the fucking a like athletes everywhere. And you want to run the triple option? The fuck out of here. Go back to Navy. Jeff Collins inherited a team with zero tight ends and like 11 running backs. What is he supposed to do? I don't know. <laughs> do what he did. He leveled him up pretty, pretty decent. Fucking hell. Fuck Paul Johnson. <laughs> Chase, thanks for the 20. Happy rebrand, guys. Been here from the jump with the legal talk and morning drives with Curtis. Ooh, to the bourbon and ball. Pumped for the next chapter, homies, from the 804 with love, wild naysayer. <laughs> I dope. love the 804. That's dope. That's super dope. Charlotte Buckeye, thanks for the five. Just showing love to my favorite podcast. Oh, and Cam Newton whooped ass. Go Buckeyes. Man, I, I can't. You didn't even bring it up. Like, those dudes went on an interview. Mm-hmm. Just looking like some fucking fools. Media tour. Oh, he Cam Newton talks shit to us before seven on seven games. Yeah, you think? Have you met him? Of course he's going to talk that shit. And then you thought you could fight him, and he beat your ass. Also, like, 
I'm sure plenty of seven on seven coaches and seven on seven people talk shit to you. You thought you could get one over on Cam Newton and right. he beat the shit out of all y'all. And now y'all all gotta go home and tell your families that we six v one and lost with all the uncles. Like I it's mean, it's over. Yeah, you lost you lost your balls. Like cut them off, donate them. Mm-hmm. You're you're done. Yeah, I mean you're a trans coach now. Okay. Um, let's just get a quick word from our partner. We can do that. Anytime I say the word trans, Chris wants to go to fucking commercial. No, it's I'm being on time. We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army. The Super Bowl's over. Football season is in the past, and now it's on to basketball season. And if you haven't done it yet, you got to go check out prize picks. It's daily fantasy sports. If you don't, I love fantasy sports. I love putting a little money on it. There's the perfect tool, the best in the country, in the world. Is prize picks. Basketball season's here. It's time to be pick pick a couple players and pick a couple of their stats, maybe rebounds, three pointers, points, assists, whatever you want, and and just project more or less. And when you do it, you put them all together. You can win up to twenty five times your money. Massive payouts at Prize Picks. And my favorite part about Prize Picks is an injury can't screw you. If you put some money on Kevin Durant. And in the first half, he breaks his shoelace and doesn't play in the second half. Your whole pick gets rebooted. You don't lose. It's a beautiful thing. It's the only daily fantasy sports out there that does this. If your player gets hurt, you can't lose. You can win up to 25 times your money. All you got to do is go to prizepicks.com forward slash menace. Use code menace to get a first deposit match up to $100. That's free money, Menace Army. And you know what I say? Don't ever turn down free money. Go check it out at Prize Picks now. More free money. It's like fucking Santa Claus. The East Atlanta Santa. Shout out Gucci. How's it going? See, and the, yeah, we really had Gucci in the A running a triple option, bro. That's what I'm saying. That's so fried, bro. Because like the A could have been like Colorado. Like you could have had celebs at the game every yeah, what? week. You could have had Migos. You could have had Gucci. You could have had so many. Yeah, 21 Savage. Yeah. Like, man, it could have been going. Don't let me get the Georgia Tech job. I'm just saying. No, that's why they should have. They didn't even want to interview Prime is what hurt me. If they, you, oh, I, I could talk forever about it. That would have been nuts. Dion in Atlanta playing for the Falcons. Yeah. It would have been over. It would have been, it would have been Jober. Um, <clears throat> Big 10 championship odds, according to you know, some of the sports books out in the world. Ohio State leads the way at plus 155. Oregon at two at plus 250. Michigan at three, even after all the departures, quarterback loss, coach gone, you know, full turnover. They're number three at plus 460. Zach, what surprises you about the Big Ten championship odds? I mean, nothing really. I mean, Penn State being at four at plus 600, I I think Penn State has a chance to overachieve that number, but they have the James Franklin effect. They still have James Franklin. You could drop the Kansas City Chiefs off in Happy Valley, Pennsylvania, and they're still going to have the fourth best odds because they have fucking James Franklin. Like, the dude just can't win the big one, right? He can't get over the hump. And we've said that about other coaches until yeah. one day they do. And maybe that is, this is his time. He's got a new coordinator coming in. Like maybe, maybe this is their year. But we hear that a lot, right? Miami fans, you know what I'm talking about? This is the year. Okay, got it. Michigan still has good players. They still have a program intact. I know they lost coaches. I think the there's it's a four-team race if you look at Vegas. Yeah. I mean, Plus 155 for Ohio State, plus 250 for Oregon, plus 460 for Michigan, plus 600 for Penn State, and then it jumps all the way up to plus 2300 for USC. And then Iowa at plus 3500. That's what was really nuts to me, that massive, massive gap. Usually when I look at the kind of the SEC odds, you don't see kind of big gaps like that. Yeah. Um, they're they're all pretty close, and maybe you'll go from like plus 600 to like plus 1200. Yeah. But to see like it at at plus 2300 for USC yeah, feels like wild. Four, four times less of a, a chance. Yeah. Like USC has a four, they're four times less likely to win the Big Ten than Penn State. Wild. It, it's it's wild. And I guess I'm still surprised though that Penn State's below Michigan because Penn State has to be better than them, right? I mean, maybe on paper, like, like talent, they, like talent they, composite for sure. Like they've got really good players. They're bringing everybody back. They're going to have probably the best defense, one of the top three defensive players on all the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. They're going to have what the second best backfield in the Big Ten. And right now, if you're going to rank Big Ten quarterbacks, or where would you rank Drew Oliver? Pro- probably one. Yeah, I mean, who who would you pick over him? I mean, not not Alex Orgy or Denegal. Oh. And then obviously with Ohio State, we don't know what's who and who's what. Yeah, unless you think that Drew 
isn't better than Will Howard, the Kansas State version. So I don't know. I don't know your thoughts on yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think Will Howard has better tape from last year than Drew Aller, but I also have seen Drew Aller, and I and I know too much about him. Yeah. Um, I think he's got a chance to have a big level up this year. I think that that was a Mike Yersich fucking failure, personally. But I mean, he's up, he's in the conversation. I mean, like as soon as they got rid of Yersich, he played really well in that bowl game against he Ole did. Miss. He like did. they were able to air some things. I out mean, the, the guy we're forgetting about is Dylan Gabriel. Okay. Oh yes, my D- bad. Dylan, Dylan Gabriel's, Gabriel's the best. Yeah, you're right. Dylan, Dylan Gabriel's won at Oregon. Good catch. Dylan Gabriel. So I'm Dylan, like, we have to be. There's no way. <laughs> there has to be someone. It's like, damn, we're down that bad, huh? Right. We're down that Fuck. bad. I wish I was 21. I'd go play quarterback <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, I mean, probably Dylan Gabriel. Um, I mean, Drew Aller. Will Howard or whoever becomes the starter at Ohio State. Will Howard or, I mean, I don't know, Miller Moss went kind of crazy over there at USC. He did. I mean, they're they're going to be super productive at USC, and but they're, obviously Vegas has no faith in them being at the plus. Yeah, they don't have faith in, the de- faith in the defense. Right. USC's odds are so bad because, like, yeah, but it's Lincoln Riley. Like he doesn't have a defense ever. The fact that USC is closer in odds, are they closer in odds to Iowa? No, my bad. I'm tripping. That was bad math. What? Yeah, they are. Yeah, okay. They are. It was good math. They're closer in odds to Iowa than, than they Penn are State. to Penn State is insane. And keep in mind, Penn State is plus six hundred. Yeah. Like USC is almost ten times less likely to win the Big Ten than fucking Oregon. Who ten on, times? Who on this list is a good money bet? Sprinkle, uh, I, sprinkle like fifteen dollars on, you know. Nah, I think I think Ohio State's the only thing I'd put money on, honestly. And and that's that's not being biased. I think with with the moves they made, they just if they just have competent quarterback play and they brought in a fucking legend and Chip Kelly. I think Ohio State is the only one I would put money on. Honestly, but Oregon, I mean, Oregon has a chance. Honestly, get, getting a chance to bet Ohio State to win the conference at plus money feels nuts. Well, yeah, it never is like that. It it feels insane. And obviously, it's because the last three years, but well, and because we add, they added a bunch of teams. Yeah. Well, no, I'm saying like it just feels nuts, but not unrealistic. I guess. No, not at all. Washington, there's a great chance Oregon's better than Ohio State. Oh, I don't think I don't think they're going to be. I don't think it's going to happen. But there's certainly a chance that they could beat Ohio State in the Big Ten championship game. I think that whoever wins the Big Ten is going to run the table in the playoffs and make it to the natty. I don't know if they'll win it, but I think because that's how good I feel about Oregon in their offseason as well. Yeah. I mean, they had a ridiculous offseason in terms of like adding <laughs> players. Yeah, they did. Um, and you know, for everything that Ohio State did on the portal, it felt like Oregon had an answer. Mm-hmm. Like they added an elite corner. They added an elite receiver. They added an elite quarterback. I mean, they they kind of had some of the similar issues that Ohio State was going to have. And they went and really strengthened both sides. And also they're going to have a better offensive line than than Ohio State. Um, I think last last year it took them into week five for Bo Nix to take his first quarterback hit. <laughs> think about how insane yeah. that is. Well, they're going to have a nice baptism into the Big Ten. It's far different defensive football teams they're going to play against this year. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fair. That's fair. Where do you think Evan Stewart's going to rank amongst Big Ten receivers? Do you think Evan Stewart has a chance to be the best receiver in the Big Ten? <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, I think he's super talented. Who's their first Big Ten opponent? Mm, I don't know. Because they might, they might not get a real bet. They might be doing the baptizing <laughs> <laughs> if they drew who I think they drew. Um, uh, they got UCLA as their first Big Ten game. So that doesn't really count, though, right? Because they're coming like UCLA is still a Pac-12 school, and then their first real Big Ten game is Michigan State. Hmm. They'll be fine. And then their third game. Ohio State. Buckeyes. That's mm-hmm. that's when the baptism happens. That's going to be a fuck. But up. make no mistake, I'm not naive. I watched them beat the shit out of Ohio State in a horseshoe. Yeah. I know it's a different team, but let's not act like they didn't play well in that game. Right. I think uh, Oregon's, Oregon's built to win the Big Ten, just like Ohio State is. They're going to be a, a really fucking good team this year. Shout out Coach Moorhead. Zach, the, the school that I was disappointed in, I was looking for the odds I can't find them that didn't make this, this list for us is Rutgers, man. This is crazy. They put Indiana, Purdue, Minnesota, Northwestern, Illinois, all on this graphic. Chris's Rutgers team didn't even get odds. If they hate me, they could just say that. Right? You feel like <laughs> right. If they hate me, just say it. I um, want to talk about Ohio State. So last year, uh, a lot, I think a, a large part of the Ohio State fan base, including myself, thinks that Emeka had a little bit of a disappointing year mm-hmm. um, and, and wasn't, you know, didn't level up the way we wanted him to. And this year, he's the only returning of the starting receivers because obviously Julian Fleming's gone, so is Marvin Harrison Jr. But we've heard a lot of buzz about Cardell Tate being an absolute fucking freak show. Wanted to ask you, what does that battle look like, and could you see a world where Cardell Tate 
surpasses Emeka to be wide receiver one on this team. I got I got I'll go even further, Chris. Now, mind you, it's I always have to put the caveat because these other shows don't put the caveat out there. They'll talk about some guy is 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 a breakout star. By the way, they haven't even fucking put on a helmet yet. Okay, so let's relax on breaking stars and this guy's going to be a breakout star. It's like they haven't even practiced one time yet, not even in shorts. So let's fucking relax. But there's a there there is a feeling inside the Woody that a Mecca might be wide receiver three. Haven't played football yet, but this young freak Jeremiah Smith and Carnell Tate are just ridiculous in shorts and t-shirts. Now. Now, Emeka has played played really good football, mm-hmm. and I think if he's wide receiver three, that's the best wide receiver core in the country. Easy. But we'll see what this young freak looks like when he gets pressed up and fucking somebody gets a little physical with him. But he's from South Florida, and i I know how I know how the South Florida Express, Express roll. I think he's gonna be fine. So, I, I'm that's one of the biggest things I'm excited about this spring is to see how the wide the buzz around the receiver room to see what Brandon Ennis is doing, to see what Carnell Tate is doing, to hear about Jeremiah Smith and what he, how he's adjusting to major college football. Because I think Emeka is what he is, a really good player. I don't think he is generation like anything crazy, like All-American. I don't think he's that. Doesn't get enough separation for me, and I don't know if he's fast enough. I am interested to see if he does end up getting passed by two guys. How close is Brandon Ennis from behind as well? Brandon Ennis, to me, brings something to that wide receiver room that no one else has. I mean, at least I could say with with Carnell Tate and Jeremiah Smith, like similar builds, um, you know, both are prototypical X's, like look the part, feel the part. Your big physical wide receiver is kind of built like, like Marv-esque in different fonts. I don't want to compare anybody to Marv. Um, but Brandon Ennis is the one – that's a true slot guy. Yeah. Like he's true slot hands. I know people are concerned about the speed, but he never got caught from behind in South Florida. I mean, we watched KJ Hill lead the team in catches for a year and be hyper productive. We've seen slots in Ryan Day's offense that are built a certain way, be hyper productive. Yeah, Jackson Smith and Jigba led the team with Chris Olave and, and Garrett Wilson on it. Exactly. And then the year before, when Garrett Wilson was in the slot, he was going stupid. So it feels like kind of slot skill set. You have to work B.I. onto the field. Yeah, I don't know who you think is more likely to get on the field, Jeremiah Smith or Brandon Ennis, but I am curious your thoughts. Well, I, Brand, I give it to Brandon Ennis. I haven't seen Jeremiah Smith put on a college helmet and go run a route yet against yeah. the corner. So I'm not going to do the premature, like, fucking this guy's going to be that. But I know so like so far, past, past all the tests, mm-hmm. he looks the part. Now, the biggest test is playing actual fucking football. He hasn't even taken that test yet. So it's it's a long journey, but he's checking the boxes. At times, do you feel like the Ohio State offense maybe didn't look as smooth as you would have liked because um, of the fact they didn't really have that true slot guy that Ryan Day wants? Because if you look at the last two years, even CJ Stroud, well, CJ Stroud's second year, like post JSN. Yeah, when he got hurt. When he got hurt, the offense at times was like real clunky. It didn't really yeah. have any answer for the in between stuff. This last year, they didn't really have a true slot. I mean, Emeka, I don't think he's a slot receiver. I mean, he's got the same like like size and, and weight as Julian Fleming. And no one would, would say Julian's a slot guy. No. Do you think that's what this offensive passing game was kind of missing? Because it felt like no. Kyle McCord really wouldn't take the easy stuff that was there for him. Yeah, I mean, I that the passing game was missing a fucking competent quarterback. Okay. I mean, and, and, and that's to all the glory you get when you have C.J. Stroud, it gets removed when you have Kyle McCord. That's the life of a receiver. Emeka just had an okay year. I know he dealt with some injuries. He dealt with mid as fuck quarterback play. Guess what, Chris? He might have that again. Mm. And I'm not saying that there, there's. It's not. I I think whoever starts at Ohio State is going to be much a, a big improvement over having Kyle McCord as a starter. But I don't know if the ball placement and timing is going to be much better. But guys are going to. I mean, you would hope that guys get more open though, right? Like the, well, the Kyle would, McCord soccer kind of forced guys to get more open, where CJ Stroud guys didn't have to get open. Yeah. Also, like, like for for a slot guy, Mecca's not the shiftiest, in my, no. in my opinion. And for Kyle, like, for the type of quarterback he is, like, do you really want your security blanket to be Marv? <laughs> like, like, no, I, I love Marv. Marv's a great player. I don't want my security blanket to be Marv because it means that, like, You're throwing it downfield a little bit more than you want. Throwing it downfield and like the guy that's going to get the most attention on on the team. Yeah, like I want my like that's why like all teams have like their wide receiver one the security blanket. Like, right? Yeah, like, for well, sure. I I think listen. 
with those four receivers we just talked about, you add in those two running backs, there's going to be plenty of weapons and options yeah. for whoever the quarterback is, for Will Howard. Like, plenty of options. And I think this is actually going to help Emeka fit his fit his role better. More defined. Yeah, it's like this is this is what this kid's really good at. This is, and you just put him where he's like most likely to succeed. And maybe if Jeremiah Smith is the home run hitter or Cardinal Taste the home run hitter, maybe he does become the security blanket. I just think you need to have both, right? Because like yeah. outside receivers, it's tough to always rely on them to be security blankets. Yeah, it is. Because I mean, what? Like Randy Moss was the best receiver on that on that Patriots team. Was he the security blanket? No, no. Wes Welker was. Yeah, like there, there's a reason for that. And you see, like it, honestly. With the Chiefs, I mean, Tyree Kill was the home run hitter, mm-hmm. but Travis Kelsey was a security blanket. Yeah. And then I think you get superstars when your slots and tight ends start hitting home runs when they're the security blanket. I think that's kind of the – Yeah, uh, Brock Bowers effect. Yeah, Brock Bowers. Where would you draft Bob Brock Bowers? I'm going to ask you for like oh, like three weeks. I, I think he's Travis Kelsey. I mean, I, I, I'll i take him top 15. Do you worry about top, what he's going to run at the 40-yard dash? Gosh, no, I watched his film in the SEC. I don't give a fuck what he runs. I value film and football. Fuck the combine. Yeah. I'm taking Brock Bowers top 15 for sure. I uh, probably top 10. Fuck, I'm gonna screenshot it for you. I saw a um a draft analyst say that he's uh Taysom Hill, but improved in terms of like Christ. what they can use him as, like Swiss Army knife. And they referenced the fact that he uh I think he had the third most handoffs on the team at Georgia yeah. last year. Oh, they utilized the shit out of him. They did. It was just funny to hear like people talk about like Taysom Hill, like Swiss Army knife. It's like, you know, dog, he's a tight end, bro. Like, like what are you talking about? Like you're just saying that to be different. Right. <laughs> like you saw trying to get clicks. I get it. <laughs> like you saw a reverse and thought, <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> he's Taysom Hill. Um, so I, I, you know, after, at the end of spring, I am going to ask you who you think will lead the team in catches. It does feel like even though you lost what three or top four receivers, they're going to be better. There's a little bit of a log jam still, but they're going to, there's more upside with it. I'll say the receivers this year will be better than last year. And they lost the best receiver in the country. Yeah. And a starter. They they lost two starters. One of them wasn't wasn't very good, but the other one was obviously he's going to be like the number three pick there. The receivers this year are going to be better than last year. You can fucking write it down right now. If they don't rotate like they did last year, do you think there's a, a chance for Brandon Ennis to try to get some of those Xavier snaps, mm-hmm. those XJ yeah. snaps? Yeah. Think, does that role fit him? And do you yeah. think he could do that, but a little bit better? Yeah, absolutely. I think so, too. Like, he's got, like, a Debo Samuel body type. He does. So, and I'm excited. And, again, people worry about his speed, but when you watch, like, high school tape in South Florida and someone never gets caught from behind. Game speed matters. Game speed does matter. Fucking one catch and housed it. Housed it. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Um, Want to get some more Super Chat, Zach, and then talk a little bit more about, uh, about you know, college football. Yeah. Um, My guy, Squaws, thanks for the two. Can you create shows on the new website? Well, yeah. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna have a, a platform, a chance there. Yeah. So, so the so the the back end of this of this new website is going to be for for all the Menace Army. It's gonna be you know very like social media. Esque, yeah. but it's also going to be a creator's realm, right? Where you can, you could go on there and create your own show uh, on the Menace Network behind a paywall, right? Where you, it's it's only for the army, and that bitch blows up, and all of a sudden we're having conversations. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's going to be really cool. And that's and honestly, that's I feel like that's Zach really keeping me in mind and like and like let me continue to chase whatever because yeah. uh, Zach knows that like one of the big things for me is like helping small creators grow. And yeah, like hell yeah, on. which I fucking love that. So people that don't do that have no conviction in themselves. Yeah. No, I, it, people, you know, we, we're in such like a gatekeepy world. It is. And honestly, like, I have an enormous ego. I, you know, people will tell you that. Zach will tell you that. And it's like, what do I get from gatekeeping? Just stupid. Tools. Like, it's don't stupid. I want everybody to be at their very best so I can still yeah. show, look, no one else can do this? Absolutely. I guess that's how I feel. But, you know, there's a couple people out there in, uh, in Buckeye Beat circles that maybe don't feel the same. A couple people yeah. out there in the radio world that don't feel the same. Um, so, you know, Bucks by Fitty. Thanks for the two. Every game, read my name. That's fire. Bucks by Fitty. Every game. I love it. It's a way to do things. Uh, Lee, thanks for the 10. Just subscribed last night and watched Will Howard's breakdown and loved the poise in the pocket, but felt sorry for him because of the talent around him. Yeah, he bad. should have better players around him. Oh, not should. I agree with you. He has, I mean, he, there's not a spot where he doesn't have a better player. Not one. Ooh, can I push back any tight end? I mean, that I, kid's going to be a top three round draft. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what we got at tight end. That's Let's go. But 
if your tight end's the only spot, you're fucked. <laughs> Super fucked. We saw Iowa have great tight ends for how long? Right. Sam Laporta has more touchdown catches in one season in the NFL than he had his whole Iowa career. <laughs> just, that's just crazy. Fucking nuts. Michael, thanks for the 10. Just a friendly thanks and congrats on the level up. And thanks for inspiring me to chase my dreams. Now I'm 23, lead contractor. Me and my wife started up a furniture flipping biz. Thank God and menace to sports. Let's fucking go, man. That's big time. That is great. Keep chasing. And maybe I'll, I love furniture. So maybe I'll hit you up, hit, <laughs> hit a line up whenever I get a place where I can get more furniture. I um, want to get one more word from our partner, Zach, and then finish out the show. We don't have another word from our oh, partner. Oh, we don't. We but you know, we do have, we have a rebrand video that we could show you. Let's do it's it. Because it's fucking gas. One more drop of the rebrand video just because I want to hear it. I really want to start off by saying thank you for tuning in. Whether it's out of support, out of hate, out of interest, or out of entertainment, we appreciate you taking the time to see what this is all about. Here I am, a former college football coach that was in some historically monumental programs. I have no desire ever to get back into coaching. That gives me the greatest gift in the world. Freedom to say anything. It is... They need to level up. I think we have some freaks in Menace Army. I'm okay with that. Go watch the fucking film. But I appreciate you for riding with us, Menace Army. Menace out. There it is. I had to show it to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. My my thought. I was <laughs> tripping a little bit. I even asked beforehand. <laughs> three. I said, yeah, three. And I just botched it. Gorky, thanks for the two. I can be good either way. Also, free dwarfs in the NFL. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Uh, they're going to crowdsource the hat coming off. There are 1.2 thousand people in here. Everyone donate $3 and get that hat off, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> When you say it like that, I feel like I got to up it even more. You made me feel like that was too much. <laughs> Tiny Rick, thanks for the two. Go Big Blue. You just don't don't know New York or even Jersey. I don't. I've only been to Brooklyn one time. I know. I know enough about New York to know. I don't like it. I was having so much anxiety in New York City, dog. I was in shambles. 13 years old. Just <laughs> wanted to go back in the car. <laughs> Uh, Jay, thanks for the five. Anyone else starting to think that Chris might be hiding some weave glue strips under that beanie? <laughs> <laughs> hey, until he shows you, you'll, you can speculate all you want. Speculate all you want. Look, five bands. <laughs> five bands. Uh, EK, thanks for the five. Does Fleming to Penn State level up their receiver play? Not talent specifically, but him sharing how Ohio State does things. I mean, it, it it's it's going to have an impact, a positive impact. I don't know how much it's going to matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, but, yeah, I think it has, definitely has a positive impact on the room, on the offense, everything. That is really interesting. I, I keep forgetting he's there. Yeah, me too. Because, like, we I mean, we did a whole, like, little Penn State thing not too long ago. We did not we even talk about We him. did not mention his name a single time, and the chat didn't either. <laughs> nobody did. <laughs> so, no, nobody cares, I guess, about him. But, no, I, I'm excited. I mean, we'll see. If Drew Aller turns him into a 1,000-yard receiver, Kyle McCord will never come back from it. <laughs> Kyle McCord will simply never come back from it. Um, I want to ask you this because I found it interesting. Harold Perkins is going back to playing inside linebacker this year at LSU. Good move, great move. What are the differences between him playing Will, Mike, and Sam? Well, he's going to be able to wreck shit on both sides of the ball, right? You just think about it. If you're an outside linebacker, they can run away from you. And he's so fucking good that sometimes he'll still track you down. Yeah. But putting him in the middle, he's just a wrecking ball. And that's not going to take away from anything he does that's elite, right? As a blitzer or anything else, he could still on third down package line up anywhere, but I think it's brilliant. I, I don't know why you wouldn't. That's why I don't know if I'm, if I'm Jim Knowles with Sonny Styles, that motherfucker's lining up right in the middle of the formation, every play, no matter where you go, I'm head hunting. Yeah. Like I, I think it's outstanding. And I think the kid's going to be an all American fucking everything. I love this career track for him, right? Mm -hmm. Like, cause when he first got to LSU, they realized he was such a big time athlete really good football player and instead of asking him to learn the whole defense they said you're such a fucking freak we're just going to line you up on obvious passing downs go get the quarterback yeah and he did that so well while he was able to learn the defense and then kind of near the end of the year they had him playing a little bit of mike a little bit of will and then the second year the first part he was playing kind of outside linebacker and then moved in at times and played really well i mean you watched him against Ole miss yeah, there were moments where he's getting you know 
getting lost, but other times he was really, really good, and they let him go yeah. out there and make his mistakes. Yeah, I think he's he's going to be the best linebacker in the country. Him and Abdul Carter just are fucking freaks. And now they're letting him play the mic. It's like, why couldn't Ohio State do this with any linebacker? Like, why at Ohio State do we need a linebacker to be able to pass the bar, uh, crack Da Vinci's code, um, build the Death Star, and, and and cure cancer before they can play? Yeah, I don't know. Brian Kelly said it best, though. I mean, he when you're when you're playing middle linebacker, you're fitting on both sides of the ball, downhill downhill runs, horizontal runs, no matter what kind of run, you're they have to account for you. If you line up as an outside linebacker, there's ways they can read you and do things to try to get you like out of their hair. I think it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant. It's what they should do. And I think the kid's going to be absolutely ridiculous. I'm curious to see what Abdul Carter's plan is too for Penn State. Because yeah. I, I don't know if he has the body to play Mike. No, nah, probably not. Or if he's a guy that is destined to be. Who knows? Like, I don't know Mike what he's done this offseason. He might have put on 15 pounds. Right. I mean, it, I, I, he's I, long yeah. enough. Do you need more weight to be a, to be a middle linebacker than you do to be kind of a stand up edge guy? Like like why is it they that these guys have to gain size to play Mike? It's well, just more of a take, beating on the body. Yeah, you got to take on guards and shit, and okay. you got to hat and hand them. I mean, you got to defeat more blocks. I guess I just I just I, and for me, I guess more more casual take. I see Abdul Carter beating the fuck out of tackles. I'm thinking like at his weight, he could be good. Yeah, but I guess you know it's different. So I don't want to. I don't want to talk on things I don't know. So <laughs> more people should give that a try. You dig. <laughs> A um, couple more, Zach. Uh, EKO, nope, not that one. And Amputee, thanks for the 10. Coach, thanks for starting up the workouts. I'm back in the gym. I needed that kick in the ass to get going. Hell yeah. That's big. That's important. That is important. Um, Cam what? just sent me this. Who is that? Deuce Vaughn. Why did he send me Deuce Vaughn? He said there was a midget in the NFL. Oh, geez. <laughs> Deuce Vaughn, do yeah, Deuce Vaughn, Big Twelve champion, along with uh, what's his name, Will Will Howard. Yes, shout out Will Howard. Um, Paul Feinbaum had a take on the Group of Five and the new playoffs. He thinks it's a bad deal for a Group of Five schools. I don't know how you feel about this, but basically saying that Group of Five schools, when they go to the playoffs, are going to be sent to the slaughter. Zach, do you agree with that, or do you think that maybe Group of Five teams in this new playoff actually have more of a shot than if they had to play the number one seed? Well, yeah, I mean, they're going to have more of a shot. And I think that's kind of disrespectful. Like, we saw what Cincinnati was able to do when they – I know they're not group of five anymore, but they were, and they made the playoffs. And they, yeah. they, it was competitive. Like they beat Notre Dame in number top, top five. Notre right, Dame. And, and then when they got in the playoffs, they were essentially in the sec, thir, in the third round of what is the 12-team the playoff, and they, they were still competitive. So I think it's disrespectful to them because you, you mean to tell me that a group of five team that's undefeated just fucking – just, I mean, a really good – group of five team can't go beat fucking Penn state. Sure. They can. I promise they can. Um, I think, but at the same time, there's going to be some slaughters. There's going to be a couple, but also like my issue with Paul Feynman, I'm doing this is why is he acting like there weren't slaughters before with power five teams? It feels right. like whenever a group of five team gets blown out, it's like, look, that's why we can't have them in the playoffs. Whenever a power five team gets fucking anally backdoor, like fucking hammered with what's that? What's that dude's name? Kickstand. No one gives a fuck. They just put him in the playoffs the next year. Yeah, they do. But this is all Paul. Paul Feynman is a mouthpiece for the SEC. And he's already starting the narrative like this group of five team doesn't belong. The next best SEC team would be have a better chance of success. He's just trying to push the SEC as king narrative. I, I guess. And I that's because, bro, we watched Notre Dame get the fucking piss kicked out of them every year in the every playoff, time, bro. And nobody gave a shit. Oh, like, nobody casting gave, couch style. Exactly. Like, like, but yeah, you seen that one video with uh, with Riley? Never mind. No, I okay. haven't. Okay. Well, I figured you hadn't. I just thought I would just, you know, float that I, you know, am, I know the game. Not more than I was out on Riley Reed you. when she started growing out her armpit hair. I was out. Okay. So, so I mean, you, so you got the prime years, though. I mean, Justine told me who she was. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, right, yeah. She appreciates art. You know, it's like it's like when basketball players that make their whole career dunk on the ball, they try to shoot the three later on in the career. That's what that was. It was like yeah. trying to appeal to a certain audience. But anyway, want to get one quick super chat in before we skedaddle out of here. Johnny Olden, the Michigan guy, go check out his channel. Does a good job. Will Ohio State offensive players still do that weak ass dance huddle before games? Buddy, I'm gonna tell you what. If they do, I will become a Michigan fan. Like that shit is so fucking ass. But but keep in mind now, there's a different swagger, right? It comes from the players. You had some corn balls running that little circle. Now you guys, I mean, I promise you, three South Florida receivers are not doing that gay shit. Yeah. They're not doing that weak shit. No um, shot. 
I've never seen Devin Brown dance. I've never seen Will Howard dance. I think we're good. But why does the quarterback have to do it? JT Barrett never danced. You're Maybe right. a little bit. Exactly. I'm saying we never saw JT Barrett dance, so the team didn't dance. No, but they still did stupid shit. But it was like oh, okay. it had some swagger to well, it. I mean, you you can you can dance just on game day. It looks a little weird. Like Justin was a dancer. Did his little did, did his little dance. Yeah. They also beat that ass. So he was, was going to do it. You can do anything you want when you win. That's a fact. Um, you want to get us out of here, Zach? Let's get us out of here. We appreciate the love for the rebrand. Drop it in the comments for me. One to ten. What do you think of it? Um, spent a lot of money. Spent a lot of time. So I hope you liked it. And, and honestly, that video is just fucking awesome. So we'll put it up on social media. You can retweet it for us. We appreciate you. What are we? What is it, Tuesday or something like that today? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Okay, brother. so we got a week and a half until we're live at Yogi's March 8th, noon. Yogi's on hard. Make sure you pull up. I need the Army to come out strong. It's Earl Bruce's birthday party. Let's go. So we'll be out there at Yogi's next week. We appreciate you. Menace out.